what you want to buy in 10 seconds, inventory slot, extra card slot, infinity hammer, 3D printer, then the rest is up to you, depends on what you focus on. Hello, welcome to the video. So in this video, we're going to talk about the gem shop and you enter it by clicking menu and then you shop. You start here in the cosmetic. Now, if you are new to the game, you don't really want to buy anything on this screen at all. These are the last thing you want to buy. I would say the number one thing is this thing, the infinity hammer for 300 gems. It lets you produce two anvil items at once. So if we go to world one, well, this is a bit annoying. Someone is blocking the visuals, but as you can see here, I can produce two thanks to this one, but I can actually produce three thanks to the alchemy. So if you buy this infinity hammer for 300 gems, you will be able to produce three items at once. And if you equip this hammer hammer, you see you can equip it here, then you can produce three. If you don't buy the infinity hammer and you equip this, you can only produce two. So it's not too bad if you don't want to buy it. But like I said, I, I feel it's really cheap what it does and I highly recommend it. The brimstone, you know, when you first start out, you are mining copper, gold and iron stuff like that. They smelt really fast. They mine really fast. So it doesn't really matter. You don't need one of these at all. I have bought one just to change the look of my, so it looks like this once you buy one of them. Here you can see this is the upgraded one. Note that only this one is upgraded. The rest are normal. Every time you buy one of these, you get another row and you can see you can buy it 12 times. And here we have the ivory bubble cauldron. I would say these are not worth it. You are buying a cauldron for orange bubble, green bubble, purple bubble, yellow bubble. You can choose which one you want. You can only buy one of each, of course. I would not buy these because eventually you will unlock everything. As you can see, I have unlocked all the bubbles. This is currently the highest one. All of them end in the same. Green bargain, orange bargain, purple and yellow bargain. And I have many million just sitting here. As you can see, I have the default cauldron still. Now this on the other hand, this is bleach liquid cauldron. I have bought one of these. They are a bit more expensive. Can assign one extra player to this cauldron, also 1.5 higher liquid cap, 1.5 faster liquid region. And these have to be bought in order. And this is here. This is the one that I bought, that's special. You can see here I can place three into this one compared to only two. And this thing produces the water droplets, which is the first alchemy currency you use for upgrading, like this one here. Oh, countering quick ref. I would say one of those are worth it. Do note that you're only saving time. Extra obol storage. Well, as long as you keep logging in and checking the storage every now and then, you don't really need this. That's pretty much all I would say. This is how many spaces you can store for free. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rows. I think that's plenty. You may want to buy one eventually, but you have plenty of stuff to buy it first. And this is pretty much gambling. You don't never want to buy gambling items. And this is more gambling. Never buy these unless you have bought everything else. While the infinity hammer is probably the first thing you want to buy. Once you reach world three, there is another really, really strong item. And that's the crystal 3D printer. This is what it looks like once it's upgraded. And these are my very impressive numbers here that I'm printing. Every hour I get this amount of resources for free. If you do not buy this upgrade, you don't get this second row. So instead of getting 27 and 27, I would only get one 27. You wouldn't be able to have both copper and iron. You would have to make a choice. So this upgrade pretty much doubles your 3D printing. Unlocks the second printer chamber to print stuff in for all characters you ever make forever. This lets you print two things at once. It can even be the same thing twice. So yeah, out of all the world three items, this one is the most useful. However, do not buy it before you enter the world three. It is completely useless if you haven't entered world three yet. And this is more sample spaces, so you can store more. You see here, I have samples. I can remove one by clicking here. Then I can put in another log and I can move it again and put it back. If you buy more blueprint slot, you can have more types of wood here, for example. So it's a pretty much just a convenience item. If I want to change to another type of wood, I have to go to that type of wood and sample it, which is, uh, you know, really annoying. This whole thing was meant to save you time and automate stuff, but 
you have to manually sample everything and keep it updated. And I haven't done that in many months, it seems. Maybe two, three months. I don't know how long. When was World 3 released? I don't know. So yeah, convenience item. You can buy two of them. Then we have Burning Bad Books. Raises the minimum level of books from the talent book library by plus five. This means it's more likely for you to get the highest possible level book. You can buy four of these. This means 20 levels minimum. And this is here in the talent book library. You see here book level range 105 to 135. If I get a, let's see here, what is low leveled? Let's do Gilded Sword. It's a really strong ability. There we go. What did we get? 124. And now we can upgrade it. There we go. So yeah, buying this upgrade raises the 105. If I buy all four of them, it will be 125 to 135. And considering I just pulled a 124, I mean, it's fairly useful, but you also get those books for free. So it's just a time saver. I want to repeat it only raises the minimum level, not the maximum. And let's equip one more prayer slot at the same time on all characters. You can buy four of these. Prey slots it down here. Since you can already equip four, it seems. It doesn't seem like that useful of a purchase. Like how many prayers do you actually want? You can see here which one I've activated. I only have one. Just a giant one. Taction of the Titans. Giant monster cannot spawn. Uh, so yeah, I would not recommend you buy this at all. Then we have Zen Cogs. These premium cogs are the best in the game. Yin cogs have the best base stats, young cogs have the best surround effect. Each purchase gives one of each. Well, they're premium cogs. And this here, each purchase gives you plus four cog inventory spaces to store all your cogs in. You can buy 20 of these. This is not needed at all. It's simply a bit of convenience as you don't have to check it as often. As you can see here, here's the cog storage. You have one page. You have almost two pages of storage already. And each purchase gives you four. I haven't done much with the cogs at all. I pretty much only fill the board and then I haven't touched them much. I could uh, start creating this one instead, but that's another video. Now this is a bit of a weird one. Tower building slot. Unlock one more slot to build towers in. Each slot builds at full build rate. You can see we have the four upgrades you can buy. I'm not totally sure if you can only place towers into them or not. I mean the name. Makes you assume you can only place towers in them, but you never know. And then we have the fluorescent flaggies. Make your flaggies unlock faster, opening up your board for more cogs. Each purchase boosts flaggy rate by 50%. I'm not sure this is that useful. I have very low build rate at all because I haven't touched it since pretty much started World 3. And I have almost unlocked the entire board. But do note that uh, this one cost 2.5 million. This one cost 250 million. 17, 50, 250, 50, 17. So they get really expensive, the last ones. Not sure that is needed. Once you have locked everything, it does nothing. This one is a very low priority purchase. So these are the bonuses. So to recap, buy the Infinity Hammer, maybe buy one of these. I mean, you can buy more of them later on, but at least in the start, you only want one. I mean, eventually, what prevents you from upgrading Alchemy to Max right away is the water. Maybe if you want to spend an extra thousand gems for that, go right ahead. I only bought one, and that's good enough for me. This is time candy. I would never buy these. They are not worth it. These are cards. I would never buy these. Card presets. Most characters only need one for fighting and one for skilling. Very few characters need an extra one. However, the extra card slot is very, very useful. You can buy four of them. If we look here at the card, you only start with four. So these upper four here. Then... You can buy the bottom four. I would say this is very useful to buy. I think it costs like 840 gems to buy them all. They start pretty cheap, but then they increase the price every time. Work your way to fill this up. You don't need it right away as you will take you quite some time to just get the card. Like nothing special here in World 1. And even here in World 2, there isn't really anything special until you get to Sand Giants for more minimum damage. And then in World 3, well... This one is pretty good, 12% total damage. Some of the bosses are really good, like Amarok, skill AFK gain rate, 10% fighting AFK gain rate, more XP for monsters, and so on. In mainly the bosses you want to focus on. And of course the card drop rate. Another one here, and another one here. 
And then we have goods and services. This is pretty much gambling if you want. Even if you buy 500, you may not get anything worthwhile. And they are pretty damn expensive. I can show you the arcade. It's a new feature in World 2. This is it. You launch a ball. It bounces around. And we got absolutely nothing of value. What the hell? He got a red boat yet. That you can also get from the arcade. It's really good. Uh, so I will not buy these. You get plenty of balls for free. And dungeon loot dice I would not buy either. I think they are one time use. When you, you get two of them. So I think they just give you two more dices whenever you do something in a dungeon. Uh, but here, dungeon perma booster. Get an additional plus three dungeon run every week forever. I give you 12 per week for free to start with, remember. So buying this one time would mean you get 15 rounds per week. You can buy this 11 times. Do remember that you're kind of wasting your money if you're not using up all your dungeon runs. Make sure you buy this one at a time, because if you burn out or something like that, which you most likely will, you are just wasting all your runs. There's no limit how many dungeon runs you can have, as long as you log in and claim them every three weeks or something like that. Here we have inventory. This is pretty much a must buy. Gives you plus four item slots for your backpack. I have bought all six of these. This will allow you to loot a lot more items whenever you come back from being offline. And also when crafting, some items need massive amount of resources just to craft them. So if we, like this here, it needs 25,000 melty cubes. If you haven't expanded your inventory at all, you're not gonna fit that in. So you can see here I have all the bags, even though the last one isn't maxed out. I got five pages of bags here. Now while the inventory backpack is really important, this is a pretty much a must have, the storage chest. Every time you buy these, you get six extra slots. You can buy 12 of them. And this is your shared storage between all your characters. And you can see here I have plenty of stuff. You need to store pretty much everything you find. Like you need to store all your ore, all your wood, all your candy. Well, I guess you can uh, eat, get the candy, all your upgrading, all your balloons, all your poop access. What, you don't have massive amounts of poop access in your storage? Hmm. Maybe you are the weird one. Bunch of bags no one wants to use anyway. Very important stuff. However, you don't buy all 12 at once. You buy one at a time. And when that filled up, there is nothing useless in your storage, you save up to buy another one. And now we have the carry capacity. Each purchase boosts the carry capacity by 25% all your characters. I have bought 9 out of 10 and I have bought 10 out of 10. What this does is allows me to stack more food. And this item here, I have all my shrines here that also boost the carry capacity. You can see here before 657 was the maxed. Now I bought the gem shop item. Now I can store 707. Same here with the food. I can have my food stack even higher so I don't have to log in as often. This also affects the anvil capacity. Now it's 3000 pretty much. Which means you don't have to spend as many points into capacity. And it also means you don't have to log in as often. And that is very important. And then you have food slots. I haven't bought any of these. I don't feel any need of them at all. This is the food slots you get. I think you start with one, maybe two. And then the world three merit task it gives you two food slot. So maxing this out gives you two build slot and two food slot. So you pretty much get these two for free. You want to buy one daily teleport for sure. As long as you kind of save them up a bit, you will have a stockpile of them. So you don't have to walk everywhere. I have 40 remaining. Well, I think 42 is the max I can stockpile. And once you have this upgrade here, you don't really have to return to town as often as you used to. Before this upgrade, the remote storage, you see here I have a bunch of items. I click here, I have no items. Back in the day, you had to go back to town and then port back. And that's kind of what you needed the teleports the most for. But just buy one, so you can just go somewhere if you need to. Daily mini gameplays, you absolutely don't want to buy this because you will burn out for sure. And if you're not using all your daily mini games, well, then you're wasting the fact that you bought this one. I would not, absolutely not buy this one. Talent resets are really easy to make and you can actually make star talent in game as well. I really think you should lower the prices of those. So this is how you make a star talent potion. You need 25 talent point fragments and five distilled water. It's really cheap. And you buy these from the various shops in the world. Like this is the world one town, you can buy one from him. This is the world one jungle town, you can buy one from him. You can buy two from the world two town, and you can even buy one from the fishing shop. You get plenty for free every day, 
And how often are you actually going to reset your talents? Especially now that we have presets. I have one fighting preset and one skilling preset. I pretty much never have to reset my stuff anymore. Then you have a subclass swap token. This one might be needed one day, but I would say not really. You can have nine characters at the moment. So you want to have one of each subclass, including one maestro, which leaves you with seven characters. And then pick an extra from whatever you like the most. So I have one of each here. My journeyman, that's going to be a maestro. And then I have a shaman and a barbarian. Fishing and to help with alchemy and chopping wood. But this is pretty much only if you make like, if you made like three barbarians or something like that and no squire. But yeah, just pay attention and you won't need to buy this. And this resets all your office upgrades. The post office, pretty much if you mess up. I actually did that to one character. I thought I had something else and I, so like I had, uh, let's say that I had a warrior and I upgraded the uh, shopping, which is pretty much a waste because he will never be doing any shopping really. But yeah, it's no big deal. You have unlimited points. Just double check before you do anything and you should be fine. With that, we have gone through all the usables and all the bonuses. And the cosmetics, well, they are cosmetics. These are purely cosmetic. They do nothing except look, look cool. This one makes an, your hat invisible. And rather, this one is invisible. Uh, so if you buy this and upgrade it, you can still wear a normal hat. Or you can use this and turn any normal hat into a premium hat. They're kind of similar. I haven't done anything with this myself. Because you have to buy the premium stones as well. You have to buy five of them. See here, you get five upgrade slots. You gotta use a premium stone on a premium equipment. These can only be used on premium equipment, so it kind of ways to use normal upgrade stones on premium equipment. I don't have any premium equipment, so I'm not totally sure about that. Right now, the trophy pack is back. It gives one character 20% more XP if they equip this trophy. It's pretty good. Remember, only one character can use this. Uh, I would never buy gems just empty like this. Always try to buy the packs if you can. You see here 4,000 gems for 19.99 or 420 gems, 4,200 gems rather, trophy and a bunch of candy. That's a bit better value. So this video is really long. If you don't feel like watching the whole thing, I'm going to give you a very short and quick summary right now. Ignore all of this. They are cosmetics. You want to buy a few storage chests. Pretty much a must have. Maybe a few item backpack and maybe a carry capacity if you don't want to craft bags. You want to buy some extra card slots so you can have all the cards. Eight cards. You probably want to buy one to daily teleport. And you don't need anything here. You don't want anything here. You want to buy an infinity hammer that should produce two anvil items at once. You might want to buy a bleach liquid cauldron because this water, the liquid, is the bottleneck after a while in alchemy. And alchemy is pretty much the main power generator at endgame at least. And you don't really need any of these. You don't need one of these. You can just mine a bit longer. You don't really need this. Gambling and gambling. And then we have the crystal 3D printer. It's really good. It allows you to double the output from the 3D printer pretty much. And the rest is pretty much optional and just time saving. Maybe these are kind of pay to winish. Depends how much better they are compared to the second best cogs. And I think that's it for the gem shop. This video went on way too long, I feel. And even though it's so long, I feel like I've forgotten something, but oh well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.